everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. Hate crying. So I had full intention to make a super peppy fun bag video today, but grief. But grief has struck my home. So today's video is a little bit different. It's not a bag. Today, we're going to be quilting. And we're not making a quilt block, but we're going to be quilting on a pre-made pillowcase. And I have the link for the pattern down below. But this is the pillowcase that um, we made in a previous video. And I had some people ask me about how I quilt it. And um, I had planned on making this video, but with everything going on in my life, and I'm not going to share everything on the channel because... It doesn't look like it right now, but I do try to keep this channel a very positive and uh, happy place with high energy. Um, but I have to be authentic with you guys, and I have put off this video for days and days and days because of grief. And finally, I was like, I have to just make a video. Um, and so many of us deal with grief, right? We all... We all have to experience grief, whether we want to or not. But we all have different ways of coping with grief. And one of my ways is actually to sew. And something like what we're doing today, which is quilting, is a great activity to do when you really just can't focus that much. So you don't have to worry about details and hardware and zippers and instructions. Quilting is more of an art when it comes to quilt making. Quilting is the part where you just put into it whatever you're feeling. So today I'm going to quilt. I'm going to quilt two pillowcases. I'm going to show you how to put my tissue down. I'm going to show you how to quilt one of them using a walking foot. And I'm going to show you how to quilt the other one using a free motion foot. Um, I am not a quilter quilter. I don't quilt for a living. So my quilting's pretty rough, but I'm still really happy with how it turns out. So today's video might have a little less talking, a little more music, and a little more uh, text instructions on the screen. And I apologize um, ahead of time for that, but you can see how difficult it is for me to talk right now, so I don't think you want to listen to me um, crying the whole time on the video. But I think it's important to share something like this because we do all have to experience hard times, and I want to share with you what I do to not get past it, but to get through it. I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. Any timestamps for this video will be pinned to the top of the comment section. It will be the first comment by me. If you want to share how you get through grief, um, why don't you leave a comment down below? And let's um, let's not make this a sad, you know, video. I don't I don't want to I don't want to bring you guys down. That's not what you came here for. But let's just I don't know, kind of remind each other that. We're all human and we all have to experience the highs and the lows and it's better if we can experience those together. So, all right, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a quilt sandwich. Now this is just three layers, a backing, a batting, and your quilt top. I have a link down below and I'll put one up here in the corner um, showing you exactly how I made this quilt top as well as a link for how to make a quilt sandwich. But you have your quilt sandwich all ready to go. This is a pillow top I'm quilting today. You also want some sort of a flat surface to quilt on. Now this is called a Sew Steady Table. These are on Amazon and they custom cut them for your sewing machine. I absolutely love this extension table. It's a lot bigger than the extension table that came with my machine. So this is actually another tool I really like to use. It's called the Supreme Slider. And what you do is you lay it out on your sewing table, and you can see there's, this is pretty dirty, but there's a hole right here, and that's where your needle goes through, and this is perfect for free motion quilting especially. 
And this is just nice and slippery and your quilt just slips and slides all over it. Now, I don't know if I'll be using this today because mine is pretty dirty and can probably use a replacing. But this is a really, really great tool that I've used to quilt very, very large quilts, especially when using free motion quilting. To mark my quilt lines for the straight line quilting, I'll be using a clover marker. For straight line quilting, I'm going to be using a walking foot. If you're interested in quilting, I highly suggest you purchase yourself a walking foot if you don't, if your machine doesn't come with one. The thread I'm using today is a 40 weight thread by Ortho. I'll be using these quilting needles. These are 7511s. Also, I like to use a quilt glove. Now, this is just a very soft, stretchy glove, but the fingertips have little rubbers on them, and this helps you hold on to your quilt while you're quilting. Since the pillow top is pretty small, I really only need one on one hand, but if I'm doing a big quilt, I like to use two of these, and that just allows you to really stick to the quilt and it doesn't slip and slide on you. And for the free motion part of quilting, I'll be using this free motion foot. Now, these feet are different depending on what kind of machine you have, and that is about all you need to quilt. All right, so for my straight line quilting, I'm going to plan that out just a little bit. Since my quilt block has a lot of great straight lines, I what I can do is actually just stitch in the ditch and follow those. This will keep my quilt lines fairly hidden, but also gives that really nice quilt texture to the pillow. So for these lines that are in the ditches, I'm actually not going to make any marks because I can just follow that with my needle, but I'm going to add a couple more lines. I think I want to add a nice midpoint line through these thicker sections, so I'm just going to give it a rough measure. It's about three inches, so I'm going to go one and a half inches in. And I'm just going to line it up with one of my seams. And with the marker, you just kind of run it along, push, give it some pressure, just like that. I'll do the same with the other side. So then I'll go and do the same with the other side. Now maybe for these squares over here, I'll just do one more line through it. That's the nice thing about quilting, is that you just kind of pick and choose where you want your lines. The rule of thumb is you don't want your quilt lines to be more than a fist's width apart. That's just to make sure the batting between the layers doesn't get bunched up during use and during washing. But you don't have to have a really heavy quilt. I mean, you can go super, super dense with your quilt lines, but that's going to make your quilt a lot more firm by having looser quilt lines and allowing the fabric to just be drapey. It's going to keep the quilt very snuggly. All right, so that's really all I'm doing for my straight line quilting. You can see the indention from the lines. They're not hard to see at the machine. So now let's take this to the machine and quilt it up. So let's talk about starting and stopping our quilt lines. So you can see for this quilt top, I'm not starting on the edge of the fabric. I'm starting in the middle. So what I do is I line up where I want my needle to go. And usually that means I'm pulling my needle down and testing. Put my presser foot down. And now I'm going to hold the top thread. And I'm just going to let the needle go down once and back up once. Now lift up my presser foot and just kind of tug on that top thread. I like to have tweezers nearby. What I'm trying to do is pull that bobbin thread out to the top. This is going to make tying these off in the end much easier. So now I have both my bobbin thread and my top thread on top of my quilt. And then I just continue sewing. I just pick up my presser foot and rotate my whole quilt top. And I get to a corner and then continue on. Now I can rotate the whole thing to go down my marked line. And when I get to the end of a section, I give it a back stitch, just one, and then one front stitch. And then I lift up the needle and I don't use my automatic cutter. I pull it away. And then I cut because I want to leave a good tail on the bobbin thread for the next stitches, just like that. And then I'll just continue on doing that to the rest of the pillow. 
Alright, so now let's talk about free motion quilting. I'm going to change out my foot. So this is a free motion foot. You can see it just has a circle on the bottom and it just hooks onto your machine just like this. So let's attach it. So to prepare yourself for free motion quilting, you want to make sure that your presser foot pressure is as low as it will go. So you don't want this putting a whole lot of pressure down. Next, you want to make sure your stitch length is zero. You don't need it moving. And also make sure you put your feed dogs down. Your feed dogs are what push the fabric through. We're going to be using our hands completely to do this, so we don't need those. So I grabbed my second glove just to make it a little bit easier. The strategy with free motion quilting is knowing, is figuring out how to get from one area to another without having to start and stop too much. So for example, if I want to do a nice little design in this triangle, I don't want to fill in the triangle and then end down here because then I can't move easily to that triangle without st starting a new thread. So what you want to do is you just want to think about where you're going, like start in the corner, kind of work your way around and then know where you want to leave so that you can go to the next one. So I'm going to start in this bottom corner, put your presser foot down. Just like before, needle down, needle back up, and pull that bobbin thread through. Use your tweezers if you need to. All right, and then I just go nice and slow. I put it on one of the slower settings. Take out any pins you might have in the section you're going to work on. Just in case you get carried away, you don't want to accidentally hit one of those. And then just nice and slow. Move your fabric around. It can be really difficult to get the even stitches. I know I have a problem with that all the time. I just practice. I just make little swirlies everywhere. So once I realize I'm getting close to the corner that I want to leave at, I'm just going to go nice and slow over to that corner. Now I think I am just going to go to the middle of this white strip. 
And then I'm just going to follow it up, eyeballing it. I don't want a perfectly straight line here. If you did, you could use your hair marker and draw yourself a line right here. Kind of like a more messy look. So I'm just going to go all the way up. Make sure you just always readjust your fabric. If you feel you, if you feel the fabric and the needle kind of getting away from you, just stop. Stop, relax your shoulders, and then get back at it. Like that. And I think I'll go down this side and then work on this left side triangle. Now I'm going to remove all the pins from my next section so I don't accidentally go over them. a corner where I've already done quilting on both sides. I could just follow the edge of my fabric to the last section, but I'm just going to tie off here because this is only one spot. Just like before, clip everything. I'm going to go back to my last triangle. I'm going to quilt inside of here. You can see free motion quilting, at least for me, is a lot quicker than straight line quilting and you have a lot less threads to tie off. But is, you know, it's kind of a messier look if you're not a professional, which I am definitely not. <laughs> give this a final look I'm just gonna do kind of a messy line all the way around the frame I just want to show you that these things don't have to be perfect to be great that that's that's what I want to share with you with this quilting I drove myself crazy trying to make every single little squiggle and bubble perfect when I was first quilting and I realized it doesn't have to be perfect it still looks great Alright, so grab the ends where you started your stitching. You should have the bobbin and the top thread and go ahead and just tie those in a knot. Just tie it once or twice. Pull your threads and cut them so that they're the same length. Now you're going to want to use a needle that has a bit of a bigger eye hole. I think this size will work for me. And then the goal is to thread both of these strings through that same eye hole. I'm having trouble, so I'm, I'm going to try one of these needle threaders that I got off of Amazon. Stick that through the opening. Stick both of your thread through in that hole. There we go. And all you want to do is just kind of bury this thread. So 
put your needle into the quilt top only through the top layer or the bottom layer whichever whichever area you're working on the front or the back and just slide the needle in between the layers and then poke it out another end and pull through and now your knot should be buried in there go ahead and trim off this thread now for the areas where i only have one thread i only have the top thread what i'm going to do is i'm going to thread that top thread through my needle and i'm just going to poke it to the bottom just like that now this might be hard to see since it's the same colors but now i have my top and bobbin thread and i'm going to do the same thing that i did previously i'm going to tie them in a knot once or twice and then I'm going to use the super cool needle threader. I'll have links for this down below because this actually worked really well. And then I'm just going to bury my knot by inserting my needle again just between the layers. It's not going through the front and pulling out the thread. And then just trim. And there you go. And that's how you're going to bury all of your thread in your knots. All right. So thank you so much for sewing along. I hope that if you had any questions about free motion quilting or straight line quilting, I hope that this helped clear them up. I really appreciate you being here with me today. I promise the rest of the videos are super peppy, super excited, but the Oak Rouge channel is a huge part of my life. And what I'm going through right now is also a huge part of my life. And I just want you guys to know that grief is okay. You don't have to try to not feel pain or not feel sad. For me, I just can't wallow in it. So sewing and quilting actually helps me feel better. It just lets me process all of the thoughts that maybe I don't want to think. And it allows me to keep my hands busy while I'm doing that. So here is the free motion quilted one. And you can see it looks nice. I'm very happy with it. It's going to look lovely on my bed. If you want to see how to finish up this pillow, um, check the link down below the tutorial for the uh, quilt blocks and the finished pillow is down there. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below and I will get back to you right away. Thank you again so much for being such an incredibly kind and uplifting community. I hope you have a great week. Get out there and make something.